Hey everyone, this is Will with HODL HODL Exchange, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create and use multi-sig Bitcoin wallets. We'll be using Electrum Testnet for demonstration purposes here, and Testnet of course functions virtually identically to regular Bitcoins with Electrum, so it's great for demonstrating and practicing here. So let's begin. So let's say we have a business partner and we want that other person to co-sign any transactions. Any money coming out of our business wallet needs to be signed off by two people, for example, let's say. So let's get started by creating the two Bitcoin testnet, in this case, Electrum wallets. So now let's go ahead and give it a name. So it's 546, so I'll just name that just to be descriptive and clear here, test multi-sig A. Great, multi-sig wallet. So I could select that, let's say there's up to 15 business partners here. And how many signatures does it require? What if it requires 14 people to sign off on it? That's fine. Or we could have three business partners in a democratic situation, majority wins sort of deal where a minimum of two people have to sign off on any transaction. But for simplicity, the sake of simplicity, we will just say two co-signers. So let's say I have one business partner and we both need to sign off. It's like going into a bank vault where the bank has one key to your lockbox and you have the other. It requires both keys to open up that lock for security purposes. So we're starting from scratch here, creating a new seed. There it is. So I should store this in my mind, ideally, by memorizing it, or on a piece of paper, or better yet, on a separate computer that never accesses my Electrum wallet. But for demonstration purposes, I will just put it here for now. Okay, it's asking me to verify that I have access to my seat, of course, as a security measure. Great, there is our master public key, so we also want to save this. Now we can just exit, since we have the seed and master public key. So now let's do this again. This is going to be to obtain the second business partner's seed key and create their wallet. So I will name this 548 test multi-sig B multi-sig two and two, creating a new seed starting from scratch. So we could be doing this on their computer in another country in the world, another city, another anywhere or from the same computer like I'm demonstrating here. So I'll go ahead and save business partner B's seed. Of course, it wants me to confirm I have access to it. So we can see the 12 random words are different because they are different wallet seeds. And here's a different XPUB key, master public key that is. So now it wants me to enter the cosigner's seed or key, which I will do. So it asks for the master public key right here. Great. So I'll just name this test, test two, test, test two, generating addresses, which both business partners will have the same receiving address as we'll see here in a moment. So now let's create Test multi sig business partner A's wallet officially here. Multi sig two and two. Now we already have a seed, so I will just click that. And then it asks for the seed. And just to verify, let's go ahead and go to wallet seed. We can see it elevator is the last word for this one, but for this business partner A's multi-sig wallet, it's this seed ending in inspire. Great, and we can already see I already have the XPUB key. 
just to confirm. So now it's asking for my cosigners key or seed, which I will enter theirs. This is for coordination purposes, obviously, and security and verification naturally. Great, generating addresses. So we should see the same VSE, last three characters here, VSE. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and begin doing transactions. So here I have a testnet Bitcoin wallet. Let's go ahead and send some money to our new business. So we both have the same receiving address, but different seeds and XPUB keys because they're different passwords. I will go ahead and click pay to. Let's just go ahead and send point two testnet bitcoins and you can always verify. I do name my wallets test here as we can see, but checking the network, we can see testnet there as well. Testnet, testnet. And inversely to verify that you're on the actual Bitcoin network, it would not say testnet if you checked your network this way. All right, great. So let's go ahead and click send. Password. Great, there we go. So now we can actually use the Block Explorer testnet version to check on this transaction as we would typically do. There's the transaction ID. Here we can already see it's unconfirmed and there's a transaction ID, COE, COE, 329, yeah, so we all have the same transaction ID. Come here, three dots moving, it's working, there we go. So it's not yet mined, of course. Just takes a moment, a brief moment here. Guess about 10 minutes. So I will go ahead and pause the video while this transaction confirms. And we are back. Now that we have money in our joint wallets here, effectively, our business partners both can see that we have 0.2 Bitcoins, testnet in this case. So let's go ahead and send the destination address we want to send to N3IWDL. So business partner A, on the right, as we can see here, according to my naming convention. But let's say business partner B is the one who's initiates the wallet transaction here. So point one. Great, that's all there is to this part. Test, test two. Great, however, now we do need to send the transaction one way or another to our business partner. So I could send him the QR code here, or I could manually save the presently unsigned transaction that needs to be signed. So I'll just say 6.11 p.m. there. So let's go ahead and save that. Great transaction saved. So now I could manually send him this file because what the other business part needs to do is load the transaction. He could load it from file, from text, QR code, blockchain. So let's say I just send him that file. Great. So now we can see that it's partially signed and then we have a sign button. So let's do sign this. Now, test test one. Great, so now the final step is to click broadcast. As this would broadcast, now we got the broadcast ID. So now, that's all there is to it. Here we can see it's already in the destination wallet unconfirmed. That's all there is to creating and using multi-sig 
wallets using Electrum as our wallet. And thank you for watching. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And of course, follow us on Twitter at HODL HODL. And we also have a Telegram chat, the link in the description below. You can contact us through that channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.